Welcome to another riveting episode of Over Under. Um, uh, if you do not know what Over Under is, I'm going to very quickly uh, go over the rules. Um, first, I'm, Lee, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Luis. I'm Val. I'm Nick Hill. Hello. Um, so, the rules go as follow. We have topics lined up for the guests, and I am going to ask them if it is overrated or if it's underrated. It's then up to the guests to decide whether or not it's underrated or overrated, and then after that, we start going into some discourse, um, some banter, some fighting, uh, depending on how this is going, uh, depending on the topics that I've lined up. Um, it could go a lot of different ways. Sometimes we all agree with each other, and other times we disagree with each other, and that's where the fun happens. Um, so I'm excited for these, um, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm excited for these topics that I have lined up for today, because uh, I think the entire room um, has a thing or two to say about them. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and get into it right now. Um, and we're gonna, the rules, we're gonna stick with last week's where I go one, two, three, and the both of you say uh -huh. your answer. Okay. So, we ready? Yeah. We ready? You a chagrin there. <laughs> okay. Audience, are you ready? So, first topic. Daniel Green. Overrated or underrated? Three, two, one. Overrated. overrated. Ooh. Why? <clears throat> you should watch um, game five highlights of the NBA Finals. The lowlights, you mean? And um, you'll you will see um, a certain player who did not make a single three. And um, did he make a single three that game? No, he, no, he, made, no, he, he, he made, made the game he, opening he, three. He, he made the game opening three, but he, yeah. he did. How many did he miss? I think there was a really high stat. He missed like above ten. <laughs> But let's just let's just put it down to uh, you're in the NBA Finals. This is this is when you have to step up. Don't get me wrong; it's under a lot of pressure, and there's a lot of other factors involved. Uh, it is a professional sport. That being said, come on, man. Like, <laughs> like that's, uh, oh, man. It, it Force the game six. It, it it sucks. And honestly, he he's in the hot seat. He, he can easily be uh, kicked out from the the organization going into the next year. So I'm gonna say it's overrated. Okay, I objected this topic because I didn't want to put him on blast, but I guess we are. So, yes, overrated because he came in as a three-point specialist and he, you know, was a significant factor in his previous teams and he didn't deliver in this team. Um, feel bad for the dude because, like, you're in the bubble and if you're not performing well, chances are you're going to continue not performing well. Or if you're on doing really well, you're going to continue doing well. That's what I've heard from, like, the players on, like, social media posts and stuff. But, yeah, that, that last shot was sad. Um, to say the least, so overrated. Yeah, I should have put Markeith Morris in this too, but <laughs> um, I yeah, man, it's I gotta stop watch. So I gotta, I gotta, we got no, 60 no, seconds no. On the clock. I, I've, I think I've, I've ranted so much <laughs> in the past freaking 12 hours. I think I'm, you know what? I think I'm, you know how like the the stages of denial, where it's like, den like at first you're just angry, and like at what what stage do you start? Ex is that the final stage acceptance? It, whatever stage acceptance is, I'm there. I've just accepted that Daniel Green is not the player who the Lakers fucking thought he was. It hurts. Um, Careful with your language. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very, it's emotions, the emotions. It's, it's, it's emotions. <laughs> oh, Daniel. How I, how I wish you were the player you started out as. Hey, he was Danny, a, Green, dude, Danny Green, you have like one or two more chances, man. So. Well, oh, he literally has two more chances. Two more chances, man. <laughs> this isn't like one or two. He has two more, two more chances. chances. This game, one more chance, win the game, clutch it up, prove yeah. your worth. Deliver next game. And... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's, let's, let's switch topics here. Um, the next one, and I'm actually very curious about this one because normally I do something a little bit different. Um, to prep for the show, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know what you guys' opinions are on this one. Um, my beard. So far, what's, what, what's the, what's the, what's it looking like here? Overrated, underrated? What's, what's going on? So we had the mustache before, now it's the beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you gonna, you gonna count down? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, two, one. Overrated. overrated. <laughs> <laughs> that was without hesitation, too. All right, well, go ahead, rip me apart. I'm sorry, man, there's two beards here. <laughs> I, I can't say that you're okay okay you know there's three there's three so, so, but that's that, that barely counts so that's what i'm saying so here's the thing there were already two beards right should we not 
Do you know how long this took to grow? Two days! Oh, <laughs> like two days! This took me a week! And like, it's barely weeks, there. Okay. Yeah, okay. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. I I think that we should judge facial hair not by its not by how long it's been a part of the equation, but by its merit. Look, I you compare said- my beard to Val's beard. You're tell he's shaving next week. <laughs> Look, I already said your mustache is underrated, so yes. that, that's the underrated part. All right, okay. cool. You got an answer? Uh, <laughs> man, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to follow, but keep it to the stash. Keep it to your uh, your image. Is and, that uh, my brand? <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that, hold on. I have to, I'm having like an existential crisis right now. No, is no, my no, brand no. a mustache? In all realness, it looks good. It looks good. Keep okay. going. <laughs> Stop being so nice. <laughs> he needs to hear the truth. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, Next topic. Well, move, I'm not going to roast you all day. Moving on before I cry. Um, now we're getting... To, we're back to the real topics. I just wanted to know, but now I wish I hadn't. Um, <laughs> Halloween during COVID. Is it underrated or overrated? Three, two, one. Overrated. overrated. Why is that? You can't, you can't really do Halloween, man. I mean, you can't have trick or treating. Uh, you, you can't have these things that made Halloween what it is, which is a, a community-oriented event where you're engaging with other people um, and, and 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 kind of getting involved in the community and ch- chatting with other people and having a good time. And especially for college students and and professionals, <laughs> I want to see this guy just. <laughs> Uh, uh, college students and professionals, uh, you can't have your typical Halloween parties and festivities and and all these crazy things. Uh, or you you technically can, but you should definitely should not. Ten people max. Yeah, absolutely ten people max. So I, I just think this year is just kind of a, a gap year for holidays and these festivities. So I say it's it's completely overrated in the era of COVID. Um, generally, I do love Halloween, but it's overrated. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, it's good. It's good. Like, I, I, I think like if people, I, I still feel like people are gonna go around and expect candy. Yeah. So as a safety net, just keep I'm gonna your just spray kids down with Lysol if they come on my porch. <laughs> keep some like hand sanitizers and stuff for the kids to pick up. <laughs> some masks. Have you seen? Have you seen those people that are? Uh, they have like those long like didgeridoo looking tubes that they're sliding candy down. Yep. Get out of here, dude. Like, I'm not, I'm never gonna, I'm not gonna buy a big old pipe just so I can give some kids some freaking candy. Like, I was telling, I was talking to my wife and I said, we get a t-shirt cannon and just like, just like, <laughs> just like blast kids as they, as they come up to the porch and like, keep a safe distance. We'll go give you candy, but like, thunk, and like, just shoot a t-shirt and it unfolds into like, <laughs> into like a little ball of candy. Oh. I don't know. A lot of ideas going around, but I think, yeah, Halloween's, Halloween's done for. I think everything's done for. What hurts my heart is that this was the year that Halloween lo- uh, fell on a Saturday. Yeah, I know. I was so sick uh, about that. Full moon, 25 hour day. The spookiest, arguably the spookiest day of the year. Um, and it's it's to waste. Also the Friday 13th this month, too. Ooh. <sighs> Hurts. Alas. All right, next topic. Jimmy Butler. Ooh. Overrated, underrated. Ooh, ooh. Interesting. I got to be fair. That's fair. That's Three, fair. two, one. Underrated. underrated. Why? You wanna go first? Yeah. Um, he got a lot of hate, and that's fine. I think it's fair because like he was known to not be great in the locker room and stuff. But I have gained a lot of respect for him, and you know he's found a place where he's happy. We talk about finding happiness and stuff all the time, and now he's doing great. Plus, I mean, when he was on the Sixers last year, if it weren't for Kawhi's shot, like the Sixers were really good because he was on the team, um, and he's led the. Uh, the Heat, I almost said the Bulls, he's led the Heat to the finals, right? Um, and he's two way, wins away from finals if the Lakers don't win. Then I, the Lakers are going to win. Lakers are going to win. But <laughs> um, yeah. 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 No, I, 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 I would say he's he's under it. He's a stud. I mean, he's a stud player from the start. I, I gave him respect as a player. I, I knew like off the court he had some issues. Um, but I've, I've gained a lot more respect for him yeah. because uh, he he beat out the Celtics when people thought Celtics were going to win. He's proved it. Beat out the Bucks. He beat out the Bucks. He's oh, pro- yeah. he's proven against the Lakers that he can stand up alone and he can he can fight. Yeah. Um, so I go. I give a lot of respect for him. He's a baller. Uh, he's a he's a stud of an athlete. Um, definitely don't know obviously all the stuff that are behind the scenes that that might be issues. But what I can see, he, he's a stud. He's definitely underrated. 
um, and he, he's one of the better players in the NBA. So. Jimmy Buckets, man. Um, I, I think that the cool part about Jimmy Butler as well is the fact that he's like such a cool role model for someone who doesn't take the traditional route of getting an NBA. Yeah. Went to junior college, mm -hmm. went to, I think after that he went to a D3 and then a D1, mm -hmm. right? That's most of the heat actually. A lot of the top players on the heat are not from like, they didn't go to top schools. Yeah. And then who, who did he go, who did he play with when he was a D1? Um, like some like, exactly. Some like rando school but he was a d1 mm -hmm. um he got drafted 30th to the bulls like he was 30th he was 30th yeah, he was 30th, 30th, 30th over, overall um he got drafted 30th overall to the bulls and now he is solidifying his like uh, himself as an all-star mm -hmm. yeah. you know so that's it's inspirational honestly for anybody who um isn't playing in in a in a high division school yeah. look at jimmy butler that should be like your like saint of basketball mm -hmm. yeah you no know? i mean more than that since you brought that up i think his just overall story is very inspiring and stuff too because like before college and school and stuff too like he had lost everything he was homeless for a while you know um he lost everything but found the motivation to like follow his passions and here he is today mm -hmm. on the verge of an nba title he's but, not gonna win but uh, <laughs> putting his body out there dude like yeah everyone was gassed after after last night's game um okay enough praise for jimmy jimmy butler we have to get back to the daniel green hatred <laughs> um next topic and I learned about this topic today. I'm very excited about it. Uh, Nike introducing a maternity line of clothing. Overrated or underrated? Countdown. Three, two, one. Underrated. underrated. Absolutely. Why is that? Um, I, I think that's a unique approach. I mean, it's it's something that I, I would have thought existed prior to. Mm -hmm. I, I think now companies are realizing that um, they're not as inclusive as they should be, and they should be looking at these things that have been ignored in the past. And a company like Nike, I think that's a really good kind of role model pushing companies into the space uh, and having clothing specific for that. Um, I, I, th I just think that's a great move by Nike. Um, and it's it's great to see they're more inclusive in, in their product offering. Um, it's, it's a good strategy for a business. I mean, you're getting a bigger audience from there and you're getting more respect and, and people are gonna keep buying your products because um, if they're making a maternity line, right? Then after that time, you're still going to be buying Nike clothing. Yep. So it's 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 a it's a good tie into the brand, uh, and making clothing that um, has the Nike feel to it and the quality of it. So I think that's just a great move by Nike. Yeah, um, inclusivity. That's everything. I think um, another amazing thing that they did, I think a couple of years ago, was that they made hijabs for uh, Muslim athletes, right? Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was amazing too. And I, th I think the overall message they're trying to give here is that. You don't have to be. You don't have to have a certain image. Like you don't have to be a LeBron James or Serena Williams to be an athlete. You can be anybody. Um, you can go out and play sports. You can go out and run, um, and still have a good time. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think it's awesome that they're that they're doing this. Um, it's surprising that they weren't doing it before. Mm -hmm. um, but it's cool that they're they're now in a place where you could theoretically wear Nike for everything. damn near everything. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, okay, next topic. Uh, Val's email inbox. So, how many uh, emails do you have in your inbox? Yeah, we're just going to go straight to a conversation <coughs> here, Val, because this actually was, <coughs> is an intervention. <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough. You uh, all right, man? <coughs> yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Um, I only have, I only have. Only have. Uh, unopened emails of uh, 10,454 or something, something like that. At what point <laughs> do you think you saw... It was, the, it was, at, it, it at, was well, at 20,000. I did have to cut it down because my email box was full. At what point... <laughs> Jesus. At what point... What was the, point, the, the tipping point for you? What was the point when you said, that's just too many emails to read. I'm just going to let it become this monster. <laughs> at 1,000? A thousand? That was your breaking point? <laughs> yeah, because before then I was pretty consistent. Like, hundred emails, I could wipe them out. You get to a thousand, oh, it's 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 the tipping point. You you don't yeah. go back after that. I'm not gonna go past like reverse ten, like you know, go through everything and I'll mark them. I was just like, you know what? That number, I'm gonna ignore it, and I'm gonna be organized and open the emails I know how to do and, and run my own search queries and and starring. So I have a I have a method within my G Suite so I can find my information. So you're like a, a hoarder <laughs> who knows where everything is. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I mean, that's that's him in a nutshell, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is basically it. Um, hey, to be fair, I have like 4K, maybe. Um, 
<laughs> what? That's not. That's not better. <laughs> like you just. It is better than ten. Oh, look. Well, yes, it's better. Hey, but, than... but 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 in the new work emails that we got, like I'm organized. Like I keep that clean. I don't care about my personal. Life. I have only 115 unopened. And my my. Work... They're work emails. <laughs> <laughs> How does this? What is? Why am I going crazy right now? I have 21 unread emails across all of my emails. I with with Apple's inbox, their mail app, it lets you obviously put more than just one email. Mm -hmm. I have all my emails on here. I have 21. If I was to click, and I guarantee you all of those come from one actually no, look at that. From a few actually from a few places. But the thing is, I I try my hardest to keep myself organized. I have folders. I put stuff in folders. I tag stuff. I got red I got the whole colors. That's you know? too, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I tag stuff. I star things that are really important that I can find really quickly. I look I, <laughs> disappointed is the first word that comes to my mind. <laughs> Shocked, I think, is the second one. Impressed? <laughs> no. <laughs> What's the opposite of impressed, actually? I think it's disappointment. <laughs> I that's that is what I feel knowing that you have a, collectively close to fifteen thousand unread emails. Just one just a weekend. That's all it takes. Just one weekend. You're sitting there tomorrow when you're on red zone. Guess guess what you could be doing? Delete, 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 <laughs> delete, delete. That's it. Tomorrow, one one key, literally, one key, and then deletes it. Hey, it works. All right, so Bell's inbox is overrated. <laughs> delete everything, and then if it's important, they'll re-email you, right? Yes, that's actually a good, a good point. <sighs> that's how many you have? You have forty-three thousand unread emails, bro. Dude, what? What is this like? From when you were born? Did your parents make you like a childhood email? I don't even have enough space for that. How, do you, is that a cross? Wait, actually, that's a good question. Is How that one have, email? After twenty thousand, they literally. Val's mad. Val is mad. Like, this, and it went down one. I was like, okay, cool. That's what it is. I was mad because I'm, he had I'm to mad. delete I emails. had to start deleting them because even the UCR. The, this is my UCR email with the ten thousand, by the way. <laughs> this is just mine from like middle school. Just kept going. My goodness, so I have. I'm gonna, I'm gonna right. give, I get anxiety if I have more than five hundred emails on my work email. Yes. Where I'm like. Okay, a lot of them are software subscriptions, all right? A lot of them are software subscriptions. I know what they are. I'm not going to click on them. Unsubscribe to them. Yeah, unsubscribe. But, but like, no, but like, they're like, the, the, no, they're the payments. Like, they're the payment invoices that went through and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, but what about like all the newsletters you're part of? No, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's hey, you know what? I use the email how it works for me, all right? And it works now it's just not fine. working for you. You have unread emails. The point of an email is to read emails. I or throw them away. Literally, an email <laughs> is like mail, but electronically. <laughs> do you have in your home? Do you have a stack of LinkedIn unread is mail? So confused right now. <laughs> do you have a stack of unread mail in your home? No, I do not. So I open then, why that. are you cheating your? I always email? open my mail immediately, and I always check what it is. Email. I look at who <laughs> yes. sent it. What is the title? Uh, and it's either. Yeah, pretty. Much. <laughs> I'm gonna give some. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give a tip. I'm gonna give some information that anybody listening can take away from this. Um. Don't do what I do. Like. No, no, don't do what he does. But something that I did is I started, I made an email that was, that is dedicated to anything that I never want to receive actual mail from, email from like sales services and all these kind of things. That's what the email that I put in there. And sometimes when I really don't want to use a service, I go to like a email, like a one-time email generator website. And I just use that to get the one verification email kind of thing. Um, do that. Just start like a throwaway email address. They're free. That's what I have. I have one of those too. How many are in there? <laughs> Stop talking about it. Okay. All right. Just do that. <laughs> but don't do it the way Val does it. Have a throwaway email address that you don't care if it hits. And here's the thing. Even in my throwaway email address, I still clean it every day. All right. <laughs> well, nice well, okay. <laughs> I get it. It's a good intervention. And I will not listen to anything. Okay. Let's go it's to the okay. next thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last topic. Uh, topic we're gonna this is gonna be a reoccurring topic because we're gonna have guests and we want their two cents on this voting overrated or underrated three two one underrated, underrated. why um 2016 election it was was it less than 50 percent or it was like barely over 50 percent of people eligible voters voted it was like it was nobody like, it was like 43 percent 48 percent something like that um that that's sad like these are decisions that impact everybody's lives every single day for the next four years, depending on what you're, obviously there's votes for like local government, but you have to be active as a member of society in both government 
and societal actions. And voting is the biggest piece for that. If you're not voting, you're not voicing your opinion. And honestly, if you don't voice your opinion, how can you comment about that? How can you complain about these things that are happening if you're not actively trying to make change around it? So make sure to vote, make sure to voice your opinion. Don't worry if someone agrees with you or disagrees with you. It's up to you. It's your decision, but make your voice heard because that's how democracy works. That's how we all move forward in a society. And this is a huge year with COVID and everything else is going on. Uh, you need a vote. That that's it's a must. So any college students, everybody else, don't think, especially in the state of California, that just because you're in California and it's a blue state, that I'm not going to vote. There's local ballots that really matter. You Those need really matter. you really yeah. need to vote. Local governments impact you more than federal governments do. So make sure to vote. Don't skip it just because you don't want to like you just say ah it's whatever. It's always going to be the same thing. It's not. Every decision you make creates an impact for the long term. You might just not see it immediately but make sure to engage in that action. Yeah, your vote matters, every vote matters. Um, you may just be one person, but you're one person in the entire society. Um, so yeah, the local the local stuff especially. And if if this year, I, hopefully this year has brought to light how just important it is, how, you know, certain individuals' actions affect every everyone else's lives. Um, it, it, I think it was more highlighted than ever before this year than in the past. So, um, yeah, please take that into consideration. Voting in California is open. Um, drop off your ballots at specialized locations or mail them in. Do it as soon as possible. That's our recommendation um, to make sure it gets counted. Yep. And, yeah. Yep. Good luck. Uh, if you can make it to your county's red, uh, voting registrar's office to drop off your ballot, um, it gets read like within that state. Like if you drop one off on a Monday, your vote will be counted by the end of that week because mm -hmm. you're at the place, yeah. you know. Um, but if you can't do that and you have to go to a drop off box, um, the lines for other states have been ludicrous um, for both in person early voting and drop off boxes. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that there's <laughs> lines for car drop off boxes um, in, in certain states, it's it's annoying um but stay in line yep at, at, and that's if i can stress anything to people who are in line to vote um stay in line make yourself uh, heard um and do what you got to do to to make that make that a thing vote in your local elections are really really important do research on the stuff that you're voting on absolutely um you know uh do research that's, that's the biggest thing i i, I can say yeah, and, uh, and I would challenge those that, uh, especially like generation to generation, pass down of what your political standpoint and all these things are. It's perfectly fine, but do your research. Don't just listen to what somebody's saying or bucket yourself that this is who I stand as, uh, whether it be more conservative or liberal uh, politics. Do your research, see what the impact is going to be, whether it be for small businesses, whether it be for unemployment benefit, whatever it is. Look at it, research it, and then vote be an educated voter absolutely and one thing that i will say that i actually am fig finding out that's like really cool about the local elections is a lot of these people are really accessible mm -hmm. like they're not mm -hmm. these like big time politicians so you can reach out to them on linkedin you can reach out to them on via email and more often than not that it maybe will go through a publicist or, or uh, an assistant but more often than not it won't it'll go to yeah. them um so if you're reading something and you say, actually, I have a question about that. Email them. Literally, if it's a local election, email the person. I'm sure with uh, with bigger races as well, they have so many PR people that you could probably do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get a PR person who has a script. W whereas with local elections, you li you message the person on LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook, wherever it is. It's going to be them responding. Yep. So that's really cool. Um, alrighty. With that, um, that is actually going to wrap up the this episode of Overrated Underrated. Um, thank you everyone who watched. Thank you everyone who's going to watch in the future um, via YouTube or wh wherever we put this. Um, I hope that you found all this stuff entertaining. I, I know I did. Um, I didn't think that Val's email inbox would get the kind of response that it did. And But here we are. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you for another you know soul survivor out here. Oh, I know that's why I'm, I'm all. Yeah, it's the slippery slope with emails. Don't. Don't, don't let it crack over a thousand or else you'll end up like Val. Let him be an example of what not to be. Um, no, but I think, would you agree that we learned a lot today, boys? Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. We, I, I think we're, we're taking away a lot of, a lot of big time things. 
Um, we're learning that I'm going to shave uh, <laughs> before next week's episode. So that's that's a thing that's going to happen. Or maybe I'll keep it as a sign of protest. Who knows? <laughs> uh, a spite beard. Ooh, that's kind of spicy, right? A we're spite have, beard. We're going to have the great beard race. Oh, you're going to win. You, have a, you, you won. You're, like, you, you already win? won. All right, whatever. <laughs> um, we learned that... Um, what else did we learn here, boys? We learned that... Uh, don't mess up an NBA final. You're gonna get roasted. Yeah, don't um, don't get on uh, Snoop Dogg's bad side. Um, and the most important thing we learned today, besides friendship, um, is to vote. Yep. We didn't learn to vote, but we talked about voting. Important. And you should vote. <laughs> please vote. Please, please vote. Make a difference. Thank you for watching. Follow us on social medias. Please follow us on Twitch. Um, we're trying to get affiliate. We're so close. I think we're like. Like what, like 18 people away from, Listen to that from now. being able to get affiliate. Um, just literally, just follow our account now. Make some dummy accounts, honestly. If you, if you, if you like, <laughs> hey, look, if you like, if you like the content enough. TikTok, we're sorry, we're not, we're not serious about that. Twitch. If you like the content oh, enough. Twitch, not oh, TikTok. I'm dead serious. If you like the content enough, make one no, or two. Something, no, 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 something, <laughs> something that you can manage. We're so close, man. Don't be cutting us <laughs> off. Something that you can manage, maybe one. And just double up. We can get 18 people pretty quick. Where do you have, we have 33. If each one of those people make a fake account, we're at 66. Not too bad. Um, all right, all right. We appreciate you for watching. I love you. Um, follow us on all the social medias again, like I said. Uh, stay tuned for the brew because the platform is a coming, and that we're really excited about that. Uh, big things are on the horizon. Um, yeah. See you next time. <laughs>